cool kids, this week I thought it would be a good time to talk about art warm-ups. Art warm-ups, you may be saying, why would I need to warm up for art? Can't I just get to drawing? And I totally understand, I used to be like that too. Back in high school art classes, I used to hate when my teachers would give us little assignments at the start of class before we could work on the real assignments because it was like, come on man, enough of this doodle business, I just want to make real art. But over the years, I've actually found warm-ups to be immensely helpful. I'm going to go over around five specific warm-ups today, which each have their own individual benefits, but overall, getting into the habit of doing warm-ups can help to prevent burnout and get you into the habit of drawing more regularly. Now, scribbles were something I started doing accidentally, but I actually learned that they can be super helpful. Basically, you start every art session by just sort of scribbling. This can come in many different forms, such as the five second doodles you have no plan of keeping, the erratic coloring, or even just legitimate scribbles. The idea behind this is that you have a certain amount of ick in your hand every time you start drawing, and the only way to get rid of it is to draw it out until you can make good art. If you want more practical reasoning behind it, scribbling helps you to get into the mindset to draw. By the time you're scribbled out, you're already in the workspace with your medium of choice, so you might as well make something good. Plus, you can get some pretty cool results out of it. For example, the icon for my inspiration blog came from me trying to make the smoothest gradient possible while I was trying to think of something better to draw, and this painting from 2014 came about because I drew a couple of scribbles and I thought they would make interesting action lines. So I've combined these next two methods together because they're very similar, but each does have its own unique merits. The first is loops, which admittedly is basically just scribbles, but a little more refined. Back in high school psychology, when we were doing a unit on the brain, my psych teacher made us start every class by drawing things like receding circles or tight-knit spirals to activate the left side of our brain and unleash our inner creative prowess or something like that, which I'll admit does sound a little kooky and she was a bit of an eclectic teacher, but I have since seen other research supporting the idea that drawing rounded repeating shapes can help to stimulate creative thought, plus like with scribbles, it can help prepare your brain and your body for real art making. The second part of this, Lines, actually comes from a post by Darren Calver I saw on Tumblr. I'll link the full post down below, but the essential idea is getting better at more precise line work by practicing mechanical drawing. Some methods of this include drawing a point and then connecting several lines to the center, or drawing several points and then trying to connect them with one line. We interrupt your regularly scheduled warm-ups for a very important PSA about stretching. Now, I'm including stretching with this because it is something you should do before you start drawing, but it's also something you should do during and after every drawing session. I could do an entire video on why stretching is so important, but basically I've seen so many artists I've known injure themselves by not taking care of their hands and it's just, it's just so heartbreaking. Just like athletes and dancers need to stretch before they work out to protect their muscles, you need to stretch out before you draw to protect yours. Despite whatever tools you have in your arsenal, your hands are the most important art supplies you'll ever use, and unless you're one of those people who can like draw with their mouth, in which case, more respect to you. Anyways, here are some stretches I like doing, but I'll put links to more resources down in the description. The first comes in two parts, but it's actually fairly simple. You're going to hold your arm out straight with the palm of your hand facing downward and then bend it down about 90 degrees. Hold this pose for a couple of seconds, then repeat seven more times. Step two is to flip your arm around with your palm facing upwards and bend your wrist downwards, as with the last stretch. Rinse and repeat. The point of this stretch is to loosen up muscles in your wrist here and here and help get rid of tensions you may be holding. For this next stretch, you're going to hold your arm out like so and fold your thumb in. Next, fold the rest of your fingers in and hold your thumb. From here, you're going to bend your wrist downward and hold for about 10 seconds. Like with the last stretch, repeat this eight or so times. This stretches out the wrist here, plus I found it helps with any pains I get in my thumb area. The last stretch I'm going to show you is my personal favorite. You're going to start by holding your hand straight and then bringing all your fingertips together like so. From here, you're going to fold your hand down. As with the last two, hold and repeat. I like this one particularly because while it stretches the wrist like the first one does, it also helps to stretch the palm, which is great if you get hand cramps. 
Not every stretch will work for you. Do all stretches in moderation, and if any stretches do cause intense or prolonged pain or discomfort, discontinue immediately and consult with your doctor. Individuals suffering from pre-existing joint or nerve damage in hand or wrist may need to modify stretches to fit their individual needs. Make the smart choice and ask your doctor if stretching is right for you. I'm just kidding, you probably don't really need to consult a doctor about this, just do your stretches. And back to our regularly scheduled warm-ups. These last two are a little more time consuming than the first two, but they're super helpful with building skills. First off, we have life studies. This is literally just drawing things from life. Beyond getting you into the flow of drawing, studies are good for the additional fact that they help you build up your mental library of how things look, which will help you with your actual drawings in the future. There are a lot of different ways to go about this. You could draw from your actual real life, drawing objects or scenes around you, or stunning from magazines or photography books, or still frames from music videos or shows. However, there is this nifty new invention called the internet, which is full of resources to help you with drawing. If you're into drawing people, Quick Poses is a popular site which has a rich library of poses and costumes, as well as a timer to randomly generate new poses at an interval. The YouTube channel Croy 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 How do I pronounce this? Croy Kiss Croy This YouTube channel has real-time figure drawing sessions with models. I will warn you that these videos contain nudity, so if you have innocent eyes, maybe use a different resource. But nude models are a great way to learn how bodies work without all those pesky clothes getting in the way. Deviant art is full of stock models, and I know Robin Rose is a popular one with lots of resources on profiles and lighting, as well as poses. Since she's stock is another classic, especially for poses, plus she even has her own site, which similar to Quick Poses will randomly generate poses on a timer for you. For just faces, there's the blog Human A, which has a diverse selection of faces. I don't know as many resources for drawing things outside of people, but if you have a phone and like $3 to spare, Jazz's Artie Game apps has a game mode that randomly generates images for you to draw. Outside of that, I guess there's Pinterest and Tumblr. And if you have a Tumblr, some of my favorite inspiration blogs are Fashion from History or Tokyo Fashion for great fashion refs, House Hunting for houses and rooms. Comox Photography, a blog run by a photographer I actually went to high school with, which has a lot of really cool landscape photography, or I even have my own little inspiration blog, Pretty Things and Pretty Thoughts, which I use for photo studies a lot. The last warm-up we're going to go over today is drawing. Right, Mero, you say? You're telling me to warm up for drawing? I need to draw? It sounds silly, I know, but this is definitely my favorite type of warm-up. It can get exhausting just working on big serious pieces all the time, so making something quick and small before can help to clear up some of the stress and be a little fun exercise. Like with all the past warm-ups, warm-up doodles can be a good way to get all the ick out of your system so you can get to the good, but they're also a good way to experiment and play around with your art. If you only commit yourself to bigger pieces, it's harder to find time to mix up how you create art, plus it can be scary to try something new on something you've spent a lot of time on. With warm-up doodles, it's just a low-stress chance to make something. On top of that, this can be a great way to doodle out ideas you don't have time for so you can come back to them later, or work on personal pieces that you just wouldn't have the time for otherwise. Because I've been dedicating myself to sketchbook work more this year, most of my warm-up doodles are traditional, but there was a period of time when most of the pictures on my art blog were just warm-up doodles. And that brings me to my final point. There have been many times in my artistic path where warm-ups were the only thing I could complete, be that due to time restraints or energy or mental blocks, and at the time it was super discouraging. I was afraid that because all the art I did that day was to scribble out a dumb doodle or draw something silly, I want to improve, and that's just not true. Constantly making big, polished art pieces isn't the only path to getting better, and in fact, it's unrealistic to think so. Most of the warm-ups I presented in this video help to build up and practice fundamental skills you need to create art, and placing more importance on these smaller practices really helped me to get better at drawing more regularly and more consistently. You don't have to do each and every one of these warm-ups every single day or even before every art session, but I would absolutely recommend doing warm-ups regularly. I except stretches. Do your stretches every day. But that's all I have to say for this video. If you're new here, maybe subscribe. I put out new art videos every Friday. Either way, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.